Well, it's been a long time since I've done a Q&A video, and this is actually the very first Q&A done in actual video, and so I'm not going to actually say the questions out loud. I'm going to have them on some kind of a mystical screen where you guys can actually read what exactly the question says, and this makes my work much easier. So let's go on to the first question. Urshosan asks, if you ever had the chance to be part of an anime starring you, what kind of anime would it be? Would you make it close to your actual life? But throw in some pizzazz, or would you make it really different? This is a very good one, actually, because honestly, I think about this all the time, about writing some kind of autobiographical work about myself, but then I end up cutting myself off going, Caleb, nobody gives a shit about your little misadventures and such. Nobody cares. In an anime form, obviously, I think it would be slice of life with a lot of added pizzazz to it. Kind of like, I think it would be very much along the lines of School Rumble, except, you know, instead of it being very much centered around girls being girls, it would be about me being a guy and the guyish kind of struggles that we go through, such as, you know, not getting dates, um, getting embarrassed by girls. You know, I would focus mostly on the um, early teenage years and then move on. Like, if the series became successful, like, actually go into the young adult years and everything, and sort of have it be an autobiographical account, because there's a lot of very interesting things that actually happened in my life that would make for a good television series. It could be dramatic, it could be sad, it could be basically just take real life events and give it that added emotiveness that's so key in anime, like the over-exaggerated expressions and everything, but keep most of it very real. Obviously, I would change the names of the characters and change the events slightly. That way it wasn't, you know, horribly offensive to some people. But, you know, other than that, keep it mostly the same. I've got little stories in my head that I've actually wanted to translate into fiction numerous times before to fictionalize them. Like, there's an event that happened to me just recently where, um... I kind of had this hots for this girl um, at Disneyland, and I ended up meeting her and everything, and it was all great until I realized that she was a lesbian. So that ended up, you know, it was kind of a funny incident. And afterwards, I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, it would be really fun to write a fictionalized story about a character who is not me, but obviously is me, going through a similar kind of funny, embarrassing situation like that. So, yeah, I think it would be a really great series. I would love to sit down and watch it. Obviously, you know, not very many other people would, I think, but who knows? People like Lucky Star, and, you know, Lucky Star is as close to Oh, I wouldn't say it was autobiographical, but those characters are very much in line, at least Konata is, with some of my craziness. So maybe people would appreciate seeing, like, a guy with really nicer hair than I have and is much more attractive go through unattractive things. Another question from the Geek Fairy. How do you feel about canon pairings in anime? Do you feel that it is more enjoyable to find subtle hints to support the fantasy? Or does a pairing being canon make it more squee-worthy? Yay. When it comes to pairings, I just really don't care that much. It's one of those things where I've got my glasses on all of a sudden. Look up, look at down. Now I have my glasses off. Isn't this amazing what I just did there? Now look down again. I am on a horse. <laughs> I just got sidetracked there with my own cleverness. But with canon pairings, you know, they're canon. They're actually real, at least within the fictional sense of the world of the word. They're what was intended. Non-canon pairings can go anywhere from hinted at to absolutely absurd. So honestly, it's I don't really prefer either because they're not really real. Non-canon pairings, if they're written well or they're drawn well, which is because they're mostly a fan kind of thing. That's when you're taking an original material and are giving it to the fans and the fans are basically doing whatever they want with it. It isn't really about you know, what is real and what's not. So, you know, it depends on who's the writer or who's the artist and whether they're doing a good job with characters that I could honestly see together. If, you know, it's something ridiculous, like um, Kion is hitting it up with the head of the computer society from Haruhi, I don't see that happening because they hate each other. Well, they don't really hate each other, but you don't even see those two characters interact all that much. And for one thing, I don't think Kion's gay, so I'm not sure that he would immediately hit it off with the guy from the Computer Society Club. Um, there are some squee-worthy Yuri pairings that I will admit are not actually technically canon pairings that I have liked in the past, but I'm starting to sort of get away from that. I think you realize as you grow older 
um, how stupid some of these pairings are, and you just stop caring after a while. Your life starts going in different directions and you begin to realize that, you know, Nagato making up, making out with Haruhi just isn't as hot as it once sounded. It's now it's just kind of like, you know, why should I care? They're cartoon characters. But it's, it depends who you are and whatever. I honestly find canon pairings to be more interesting or squee worthy, obviously, because they're actually canon pairings as opposed to some shit that somebody made up to get their jingles jollying. Jingles jollying? What the fuck? The Geek Fairy asks, How do you feel about the personification of animals in anime? Is this touching on furries? By the Geek Fairy. Aw, oh, isn't that sweet of her? There are plenty of personifications of animals in anime. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. And I it's, honestly, it's one of those things that... I'm not into the whole furry culture, and I don't really know anybody who is into the furry culture. And I just think it's just another one of those, you know, silly fetishes. Who cares? So for me, it's kind of like, sometimes it's a little bit creepy if you have a very sexed up character who's an animal that's personified. But really, it depends on what you're watching. If it's two furry animals basically having sex, of course I'm going to be creeped out by that. If it's not, and it's like just personified animals, who cares? I really do not care. It, they can be very cute at times, actually. You almost want to pet them and hug them and take them home, but not in the completely non-sexual sense of taking them home. I take them home and put them by the fire and watch as they curl up by the fire. And Yeah, I'm not a furry. I am not. Cutman567 asks, Do you like the movie The Sound of Music? Voila, my glasses are off. Um, I have never actually seen The Sound of Music. I, it's a horrible confession that I have to go out there and admit to you guys, as much as I love movies and I claim that I'm a big movie buff, never seen The Sound of Music. And I haven't seen Citizen Kane either. Or lots of other classic films that I need to see. I apologize, I have failed everyone, I feel miserable, I... I just don't know if I can live with that, you know. And in a society where not seeing the sound of music, it's it's a pretty big deal, and you end up getting very discriminated against if somebody says the hills are alive with the sound of music, and you don't know what to say afterwards. You, they don't let you in their club. It's very sad that people would judge you on something like that. The sound of music. I hate that movie. Again from Cutman567, do you hate Gurren Lagann, or Lagann, or however the hell you pronounce that, I do not know. No, no I do not hate Gurren Lagann. I only saw the first four episodes or so, and I will admit, didn't like it that much. I didn't end up continuing watching it, but it is one of those shows that I've heard gets increasingly better as you go along, so maybe, maybe I should give it a second shot coming up here. But I have said, probably jokingly, that I hate Gurren Lagann more than once. But I, I don't really mean it. It's another one of those cases where it's something that I don't like that's mainstream. And so whenever somebody asks me about it, sometimes I can be a little bit obnoxious. It can be a little bit teasing. But, you know, on the whole, it isn't a bad show. I just, it wasn't my style. It felt a lot, I got a lot of the same vibes from it that I did about FLCL. I just, I didn't like the animation. I didn't like the art style. I didn't like the characters. There was nobody I connected to right away. Even though Yoko was hot, you know, there's nothing really there that connected with me with the material. And that's a very big thing for me. I have to feel like connected to the show, otherwise I don't really feel like continuing. Unless it's a really hilarious comedy. It just didn't snatch me. I can't really give that much more of an opinion on it. It's one of those cases where I feel bad. I really feel bad analyzing it because I can't really give that much for why it rubs me the wrong way, other than the fact that I just, when watching it, I'm not entertained, and I'm not digging the visuals. It's such a superficial sort of thing to say, but I, I don't care for the story, don't care for the characters, don't care for anything in it. It's really too bad, because I wish I was sort of in the fan base with that one, and sort of cheering alongside Gurren Lagann, but maybe I should watch it some more. I, I think I will sometime in the near future. As soon as I'm done with the Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles, I'll make sure and check it out.